Good afternoon everyone, how are you doing? I hope you're all doing well and you're having some of this lovely sunshine uh, that we've got in the UK. Today we're going to be continuing with part three of the University of Helsinki's massive course. We're going to be looking at strings in a little bit more detail. We're going to be revising reading, printing and comparing strings and knowing how to split a string into several pieces. So we're going to be using a few new methods today which will be quite nice and quite exciting. There are 10 challenges in this section, so it would be a good amount to get our teeth stuck into. Um, hopefully you enjoy them. So, let's get started. First, going to revise what we already know about strings and how to split them. Below, we create a string variable magic word that contains the value abracadabra. Passing a string as a parameter to a print command, or for that matter, any method that takes a string parameter, happens in the familiar way. We've got our system out here, or our s out. Uh, the print line method here is being passed the variable magic word, so we would expect it to print this. And you can see down here that it is. You can read a string using next line method offered by the scanner. The program below reads the name of the user and prints it. So here we've got our scanner, which we are quite familiar with, hopefully by now. We've got the user prompt, which is our S out, asking the user to enter the name. And here we've got the user input being stored to a variable called name and then we are printing that name out using the s out command. So what's your name? Vicky, and then it prints out Vicky here. If you place a plus operator between two strings, you get a new string that's a combination of those two strings. Be mindful of any white spaces in your variables. So we've kind of looked at this a little bit, you know, before when we've said about University of Helsinki's sort of server tests being quite finicky with too much or too little white space in. So I'm sure you're all aware of that. So here, for example, we've got hi with a white space. And then on this one with Lily, we don't have any white space at all. If that white space wasn't there, it would print hi and Lily right next to each other. But because we've got the white space in the hi string literal, it prints that out here as well. So it's something you need to be aware of, but it's something that you will inevitably forget to do. But it's quite an easy thing to spot if you regularly test. Obviously very simple to remedy. So here we have our first exercise. So write a program that reads a string from the user and then prints it three times. The program should only ask for the string once. Don't use a loop. Okay. So a loop would be so a loop would be one of the more obvious ways to complete a task that involved printing out things you know more than once, repetition. But this isn't going to be too bad at all. We're just going to use the same system out command and we're going to print the uh, variable that has the string stored in it three times. So, right, let's just quickly double check this. So we need to use this prompt. So give a word. There we go, I'll just turn my mouse down. Right, so let's head back to our NetBean. So this is going to be our prompt. So we can just paste that in there like that. Just a quick point actually. So some of you may have noticed on the left I've got these green lines. For those of you that have followed the Git and GitHub video, this is an indication of the file changing and it being tracked by Git, so you know that there are changes that need to be uploaded to GitHub. Okay, so green lines are good, it just means that you're making changes, and so it's nothing to worry about and it's definitely expected. So we've got our system out, we're going to need to store the variable in a string, uh, so we can call that input, remember you can call it whatever you want, it doesn't really matter and we're going to take the value of the next line and then we just need to print it out. So what we can do is s out and then we can s out input like so and then if you recall from a previous video, an earlier video, if you hold control and shift and press up on your keyboard it will duplicate the line of code. So here we've got our three printouts not using a loop which is one of the sort of prerequisites um, but it will print out three times. So if we give that a test locally first, hopefully I haven't missed anything. Ah, okay. Ah, right, so if we look back at this example here, it prints it all on the same line without any white space. So what we can do is get rid of the LNs. In fact, we could do it a different way. We could do like this. Shouldn't be any reason why we can't do that. Let's have a look. Let's give that a test. And see what we get back. There you go. So that's passed. So let's get that one submitted. So that's the first one done. That was quite nice and quick and easy. Although I did make a mistake, so I suppose it wasn't that easy. Right. So let's get this one closed. 
and let's head back to the website. See if that a refresh. You know what? We haven't checked our points for a while. Hopefully, there's none missing. Oh, looks like they've got a new progress bar as well. Oh, there's some missing from part two. I'll have to go back and get those. Okay, well, we've got the point for that one, so that's good. So here we've got string comparison and equals. When we've looked at comparisons in the past, we've used the double equal sign, but with a string, it's slightly different. But it seems that we're going to have a look at that just now, so that's great. So strings can't be compared with the equals operator, the double equals here. For strings, there exists a separate dot equals command, which is always appended to the end of the string that we want to compare. So here we've got our text. So what we're saying is compare the value of text, which is coarse, and see if it equals marzipan. If it does, the text variable contains the same text. And if it doesn't, the variable does not contain the same text. I'm going to move that to the left. Let's get NetBeans up here. Let's just open this one. What we can do, as you probably know, is copy that code in. Let's just paste that in there. Oh, and remember, for those of you that are uh, following the GitHub uh, uploads, you can use your um, git add to add the previous file. You can do git commit completed part 324, uh, 20, part 323, uh, and then you can commit that now, or you can commit it when you at the end of the video, and it will still count as separate uploads, and it will show that you've been uh, tracking your work more regularly and frequently. So let's if we run that, I really should fix that, shouldn't I? Cool. So we get in the text variable does not contain the text. Uh, marzipan, that's great. Um, and that's really what we're expecting. So you can always copy their code and paste it in and test it as well and have a mess around with it. So if you wanted to change it to you know, whatever you wish to test the, the function or the method that we're looking at, of course, that's an option as well. So the equals command is always appended to the end of the string that you want to compare. String variable dot equals something. You can also compare a string variable to another string variable. So here we've got our original string literal there. So course dot equals, and then we're passing another variable here instead of a string literal between double quotes. So that's perfectly fine as well. When comparing strings, you should make sure the variable has some value assigned to it. If it doesn't have a value, the program will produce a null pointer exception error, which means that no value has been assigned to the variable or that it is empty or null. As we've come to know, a Boolean value can be inverted through negation, which is using the, the exclamation mark. So let's just make that bit bigger again so we can see the full screen. Here what we're saying is that if text does not equal cake, then it will print out it wasn't, uh, and if it does equal cake, it will print out it was. So remember that the, the a bang or the exclamation mark means does not, or the opposite. So our next challenge is to write a program that asks the user for a string. If the user writes the string true, the program prints you got it right, otherwise it prints try again. Okay, let us open our NetBeans, make that larger. That. Right, so let's see what we need. So give a string. So we'll use a system out and then put our prompt in there. And remember, um, it's S O U T and the tab key on your keyboard for that shortcut. Then we're going to need to store a value. So here it's saying that we need to give a string specifically. So if it was only Boolean, if it was only true or false, that would be fine, but if we were to enter true-ish, it would um, crash our system. So it's good to use a string initially, and then we can do the uh, dot equals comparison. So we'll just call it input, uh, and we'll say that that's equal to the scanner.next line. We can use a different method, which is just dot next gives the same sort of result. There is a difference between next and next line, which I'll go over briefly now. But if you were to enter a sentence, so the quick brown box, for example, next, we'll see this as four different inputs, whereas next line will, if I could spell it, will read this as one, one line of input or one input. So next has um, separation by spaces or tabs, I believe it is. It's certainly spaces. 
Uh, so like I say, it would treat it as four different inputs. But obviously we're only using single input, so at the moment it's absolutely fine. But again, it's just something to be aware of uh, that you might find useful. Okay, so let's see what we've got to do next. Okay, so it needs to be true lowercase. So we have got, I wonder if we can add on, there we go. So that makes sure that everything entered is going to be lowercase. So just to show you, uh, let's see. In fact, let's just take that off. Let's give that a run locally. So that gets printed out exactly as we typed it in, as you would probably expect. As you would expect. But if we add this dot two lowercase on and run it again, let me put my caps lock on. You can see it converts everything to lowercase. So that's quite a good thing to be aware of. There's um, dot uppercase as well. Um, I think, I can't remember if it's this or Python, there's an ignore case. Oh. It must be Python. But yeah, you've got um, two uppercase as well. Uh, so let's keep ours to lowercase, there we go. Right, what do we need to do now? So we need to do a comparison. Write a program that asks user for a string. If it use a right to true, the program prints, you got it right, otherwise it prints try again. Okay, so we could use uh, an if statement. So if input dot equals true, pass out else, was there an else? Yeah, you got it right and try again. So let's copy these, make sure we get these right. So let's paste that one in there, paste that one in there, and then let's give that a run. Perfect, so let's just run that once more. Brill. Excellent, so let's give that a run and see what we get back. Oh, didn't even press the button. There we go. And there you go, we've got our little pass. So let's OK that one. Close this down. And that. There we go. Right, let's head back to here. Give that a refresh. OK, write a program that recognizes the following users. So we need Alex and Emma with a password of Sunshine and Haskell. So we could use an array or a list for this, which would be quite fun. There'll be a few different ways that we can do it. I'll do it a couple of different ways just to keep it a bit interesting, hopefully. So write a program, so we need enter username, so let's copy that. So again, these are all lowercase as well, aren't they? So we can use the dot two lowercase too, if you want. So we've got s out, uh, paste that in. Then we'll have a string, username equals scanner dot next. We can leave it as dot next, that's fine. Dot two lowercase. Then we can do system out and take enter password. Oh. There we go. Uh, and then we can do string username equals scanner.next. Um, sorry, that would be password, won't it? Then, on, um, we've been using the dot two lowercase on username. On password, you'd probably be less inclined to use it because a lot of passwords ask for specific characters to be, or a certain amount of characters to be uppercase and lowercase. So if you use dot two lowercase, it would change the user's password. Um, so we wouldn't we wouldn't do that there. So we can leave that one without it. You can put it on if you want. That's not a problem. You have successfully logged in. That's fine. Let's think. If we're going to use an array or a list. Actually, let's do it the simple way first. So if username dot equals, and then we can do Alex, and password dot equals. Was it sunshine? Wasn't it sun? Sunshine. Oh, why doesn't it like that? Let's have a look. Oh, I haven't closed off the correct amount here. There we go. So we can do that one. We can do another conditional. Else if username dot equals, and I'll put the bits in and I'll come back and add them in a second. So we've got that one. It's got doubles. And the and is shift and seven on your keyboard, uh, just if you guys didn't know. And then we've got password dot equals, and then that's going to equal whatever that equals, and we're going to have that, and then we can do it else, which could be username and password not recognised. There we go. 
So let's just quickly head back here and see what else we needed to enter. So there we go. So we've got Alex and Shun Sunshine and we need Emma and Haskell. So let's in here, put Emma. And Haskell. Let's give that a run. Oh, do you know what? It wasn't meant to be uh, username and password entered incorrectly. It was supposed to be incorrect username and password. And I was supposed to do the printout. You've logged in successfully. I haven't done very well there at all. Right, so let's change this. That's sorted. And then let's do this one as well. Let's just make that bigger. So we need our conditions in there, don't we? So that one. Might as well copy that. Now let's give that a run and see what we get back. So again, just as a reminder, we've got the green here to say that we've made changes to this git tracked file. Technology user next line method to get input. Nope. Let's just change that to next line. Because if they're entering lots of different usernames and passwords, remember you've got the space separated words. Ah, so there we go. It was because I wasn't using next line. So that's cool. So we've got that one working. Brilliant. So there we go. We've got the passes for that. Let's close this one. There you go. Here we've got our login again. So let's refresh that. We've got our point. Let's see what's next. Oh, look at that. Login should not be implemented like this in real life. You can become familiar with safe ways to implement logons and courses focusing on web programming. So that's basically what we just spoke about. Now we're going to look at splitting strings. You can split a string into multiple pieces with the split method of the string class. The method takes as a parameter a string denoting the place around which the string should be split. The split method returns an array of the resulting subparts. In the example below, the string has been split around a space. So here's our array. Oh, I see. So they're using the split here to say that there's to split the first, second, third, and fourth off into these arrays. So 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then here they're printing them out. So they're just using a for loop to print them out. We could use a for each there as well, actually. So, write a program that reads strings from the user. If the input is empty, the program stops reading input and halts. For each non-empty input, it splits the string input by white spaces and prints each part of the string on a new line. Okay, that's gonna be quite an interesting one. Okay, so for this one, it doesn't seem that we need any sort of prompts, user prompt. So I think we can probably just get code in. Okay, so let's just move that to the right. Let's open up line by line. This would be a good example actually as well um, to show you the difference between um, the method dot next and next line. So I think, in fact, what would I'll do first is show you that. Uh, so right, what do we need? We don't need a user prompt, so we need a string. We can call it user input. And we can say that's equal to scanner. We'll do next line first. Let's see if it will work with this. So what I'm gonna do is print out user input and we should see that the whole line with the spaces is printed out. And I imagine what will happen with the next, uh, the next time we do it, when we use the um, dot line, we should see a difference. So uh, quick brown box. So we've got that whole printout. So the quick oh, brown box. Okay, see, so because it stopped at the first space, it only took that as the input. So let's actually see. So what I was wondering is, on their scanner if they used next line or if they used next. I suppose it doesn't really matter. We, we can use next line and then we can use it with this split as well. So let's give this a go. So we've got string user input, that's brilliant, that's fine. If we change that to that, we will need that shortly. Oh, but actually, actually it needs to be printed out on a new line, doesn't it? That's okay. Okay, so let's see how they've done it. So we need a string. Okay, so we need a string array. Uh, so that is gonna be, we'll call it split. Let's say a split, and then we know it's array. Is equal to, and then that will be equal to our user input dot split, oh, what am I doing? Like that. We've got that split in, that's gonna be entering the array, that's great. Right, let's try it with a for each. So we could say for word in, it's not in, is it? A split. Uh, 
then we can print out Word. Let's see what it doesn't like about my add initializer for loop. Oh, it's string, isn't it? It needs the data type. So for string word in split, print out word. So let's just give that a run. I won't put it against any testing. I'll just do it locally. Let's try the quick brown fox. Okay, so that's just done that bit. And that's because we left it. Oh, I left it. Not you guys. I did. I left it as next. Let's try that again. The quick brown. Cool. So that's one way of doing it with a for each. So what we're saying is for each word in split. So we're calling word is something that we've made up just like string user input or string um, array a split. We could call that anything. We call it I. It doesn't matter. But word makes sense. Actually, to make it a bit more readable, I'm going to change the uh, name for the array string. So I've selected it and I'm pressing Control R on my keyboard and we can call it uh, array words or words array, whatever you want, it doesn't really matter, but it just reads a bit more clearly now. So for each word in array words, print out that word. So it will loop through as many times as needed. So hope that I feel quite confident about that. Let's give that a run. Oh my God, I pressed it twice again. It's going to have a hissy fit. Okay, so we've got an error. Let's have a little look at that. Oh, we've got a few errors. I know what, we've, what I've done. So it was meant to take input until the input is empty. So what I can do is a while loop for that. So while input is not empty, keep asking the user for input and then we can use the for each to print it out. So let's go back here. So while scanner has next, Move that in there. What I'm wondering is if the array would need to go inside the loop or not. In fact, and if the four would need to go in. Let's just pop it all in. It will loop through this until the user inputs a empty line. So let's give that a little test. Oh. Bro. Okay, so it hasn't broken out of the loop. Oh, because it would still have next because we're, enter we're pressing enter, which is classed as a next. So what we could say is scanner. So we don't want it to be equal to that. What we want it to be equal to. Uh, actually, no, we do want it to be equal to that, don't we? So if it equals a blank uh, line. So let's try that. Oh. oh, of course, it already equals that because that. Right, let's have that space in there. Let's close these. There we go, that should be closed. Let's give this one a run again. So the, so it's not printing. It's not exiting either. Okay, let's just take these. Oh, didn't want to open the tests. Didn't want to do that either. What's the, let's see what the shortcut is for formatting. Alt and Shift. Oh, that's where I was going wrong. Right, let's try this again, see what we get. Hmm. Okay, and I have a think about this one, see if I can come up with a solution. Okay, so I seem to have got my code working, and I've just um, moved it about a little bit. So before we had the um, array and the for loop inside the while, um, and then I moved it out, but I popped it back in. Um, so it's all contained within this loop. So it goes through, receives the user input, checks to see if it's empty. If it's not, the user input is stored to array words, and then we use the for loop to see what's in this array, to see which words are in the array, and then we print out that word. So if we give that a test, looks like that's gonna work. There we go, excellent. And then we can submit that one. Let's just wait for that to submit. And there's a few things that I can show you about passwords that you might find interesting. So there we go, we've got the passes for that. 
I've made a separate video for this password exercise just to show how you could store a password as a hash and how you could compare that to a stored password in a database. So if you want to see that, I've put that in the shorts videos and I'll pop a link to the video just here for you to look at. That's the end of this video. I have got the next video in preparation already. It's already recorded, I just need to edit it. So I will have it ready for you in the next few days. Until then, good luck and happy coding.